Hello, today's lesson is on slope intercept form. We'll go ahead and start with this warm up to get going. So um, we've got, it says four forest con conservation workers estimated the circumference of a tree trunk. Sophia estimated the circumference to be uh, 24 square root of five inches. Mark estimated the circumference to be 51.38. And Ethan estimated the circumference is 158 over three. And Tara estimated the circumference is 16 pi. So we need to, um, the question here is arrange the workers based on it, the estimates they gave, put them in order from least to greatest. So you've got to change them all to the same format. So let me go ahead and desk, uh, share the calculator. Remember that you're changing these all to decimals. And make sure you're writing them down. So then you have four, 24, and then you do square root of 5. So the calculator is multiplying uh, 24 times whatever the square root of 5 is. And we get approximately 53.67. And then we do 158 over 3. So divided by 3 is 52.66. So I'm just going to put 67. And then... The other one, you know, one of them is already a decimal, so that we just need to do 16. Um, uh, where is our pi key on this calculator? So we can actually just estimate, um, since we're, we, oh, here it is, Miss Horton, pi. <laughs> Sorry, 50.27 approximately. All right, so we're going to go ahead and. Let me go back to our file, and we're going to look at those numbers again and compare them. So this one was 53.67. This one is this already decimal, and then we have 52.67, and then 50.27. So arrange them from least to greatest. I'm going to go ahead and put this in there so it lines up. So you can see you have 50, 51, 52, 53. So that would be the correct order. 16 pi is the smallest. Uh, 51.38 is next. And 158 over 3. And the largest one is 24 square root of 5. So that was a review of ordering real numbers. So what are we doing today? Essential question, how do I write an equation in slope-intercept form? Today I am writing an equation in slope-intercept form so that I can write an equation in slope-intercept form. I'll know I got it if I can assess the data on the graph to write the equation. All right, so here's academic vocabulary. This is in class kick under the math notebook. It is important that you have that and you understand that. We're going to go over this today, what slope-intercept form is. I have slides to break that down. We'll talk about what the y-intercept is, what the actual slope is, which we've already talked about that. We've already talked about proportional relationships, and we're going to talk about non-proportional relationships. So our focus today will be these top three. So just a quick review, proportional relationships, remember, go through the origin. Now look at the equation y equals 3x. So there's no plus or minus anything. It's just 3x because it goes through 0, 0. And this one being a negative slope, it's y is equal to negative 3 halves. So here's the things for proportional graphs. goes to the origin, crosses x and y at 0, always in the form of y equals kx. Slope is the y over x or rise over run, or it's the change in y over change in x. We learned all about that in the last unit. So putting it together now, so because you're going to have some graphs that don't go through the origin that are called non-proportional ones, and so the, we look at slope-intercept form. The, these are linear relationships. That just means a line can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b. This is called slope-intercept form. The y-intercept is the b. That's where it's going to cross the y-axis. 
the slope is just like we've been working with. It's the refers to the constant rate of change of the linear relationship. It determines the steepness. So breaking it down, we look at the, the equation, slope intercept form. The M is the slope, B is the Y intercept. So this is the part that we've added. So we, let's just look at these and all we're doing is picking out the slope and Y intercept from the equation. If you have Y equals five X plus four, don't overthink it. The slope is just the five. This is this part right here and the Y intercept is four. And the next one, it's 5x minus 4. So that minus 4 means it's negative 4. It's going to cross the y-axis and negative 4. Then we have negative 5x. So the slope is negative 5 plus 4, y-intercept 4. And then negative 5 minus 4 or negative 5x. So negative 5 is the slope and negative 4 is the y-intercept. Now remember with the slope, because, you know, it's rise over run, Anytime you have an integer number like that, you just it would be 5 over 1. So rise up 5 over 1. Or on the negative 1, go down 5 over 1. All right, so using the slope-intercept form to graph linear equations. So what if you know, I mean, you have your equation, you can actually use the information from the equation to draw the line. You only have to have two points. So here's an equation for an example, y equals one half x plus three. You start with this plus three. That's where it crosses the y axis. It's gonna cross at three. So that point is zero comma three. Once you have that point on the graph, then you use the slope to find the next point. One half means you rise up one, run over two. And you have two points, connect them, draw the line. So let's uh, try this one. But first, let's pick out uh, what's the correct answer here, uh, which one's slope and y-intercept. So this uh, slope is 3 fourths, y-intercept 3. Uh, looks like A is the correct answer there. Okay, so we're going to start with graphing the y-intercept. Put a point here, and then we have 3 over 4. So you're going to go up 1, 2, 3, and then over 4. And then just connect those together. I mean, you can do, actually, you'd go this way too, but it's hard for me to do that on the computer so be, the line just keeps going in both directions so you have several all you know infinitely many points on this line all right let's look at this one so again we have negative 2x plus 3 so the slope is negative 2 so it's we now it's between b and c uh, y intercept is positive 3 so it's not c it is b all right, let's go ahead and graph this line. So we start with our y-intercept. Negative 2 for the slope is negative 2 over 1. So we go down 2 over 1. I'm going to just make another point here, down 2 over 1. I mean, you, can, you only need 2, but I'm going to go up this direction too. Just see it, it's consistent, and we have uh, a line that we can draw. All right, hopefully, this is clicking with you. If not, please reach out to me. We've got a few more to go over. So, it says the graph of a linear function is shown on the coordinate grid. What is the y intercept of the graph of the linear function? So, you this is something you'd also have to be able to do. You just look at where it crosses. Let me see this one. I'm not sure. Yeah, it does cross right here in negative six. That one's kind of hard to tell. I know on the star test one time they put this weird fraction number, and you can actually figure that out with the slope formula. But you know, for this 
recording, we'll just say that it is negative or zero, negative six. And we'll practice more where if it doesn't cross exactly at an integer number, then we will um, show, use that slope formula to see how to find that exact number. All right, let's see. Write an equation of the line. So this is the next part of that. So if you have a graph, you can actually write the equation of the line. Now, actually, I'll, I like starting with the what is the y-intercept because that's easy. It's like, so here it is. It crosses at 0, 1. So my y-intercept is 1. Now, slope, it's a negative slope. It's going down. So it goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 2. So down 4 is negative 4 over 2. That simplifies to negative 2. Now, remember, we are going to write the equation in slope-intercept form, and now we're just going to plug in the numbers. Our slope, which is the m, is negative 2, so we put negative 2x, and then the y-intercept is 1. All right, let's look at this one, see if we can figure out the equation. So it crosses here, so that's the plus 3. So we're going to eliminate a and c. It's a negative slope. So this one's pretty easy because, well, actually, no, okay, they're both, for, I'm looking at a. So b and d both have negative slopes. We've got to figure out the slope here. We can actually, it looks like it crosses here, too. So it goes down 1 over 2. So down 1 over 2. So it's D. Okay, let me see. We're going to have to just move. I won't be able to do all of these. Let's try this one. So it crosses here. So plus, that didn't help much. It's, it's a positive slope, though, going up. So we can eliminate C and D because those are negatives. So let's see, what is my rise? It goes 1, 2, 3, and over 1, which is 3. So that would be B for this one. All right, let's go ahead and do one more real quick. What equation is represented by this graph? It crosses right here at negative 2. So we can eliminate A and D, and then it looks like it crosses again here. It, so it goes up 1. It is positive, but the, both, those are both positive. But it goes up 1 over 4. Remember, rise over run. So the answer is B. All right, so on your schedule, you will see this for today. And just make sure you are keeping up with these lessons and assessments. Reach out to me if you have any questions.